Today, on this 2012 Hyundai Accent, we're going to show you part number RM-155. This is the Roadmaster Taillight Wiring Kit with Bulb. Now our Bulb and Socket Kit typically installs in the taillights. In our car here, they're installed at the lower part of the taillight. Okay. This is our driver's side. It's going to be the same thing over on the passenger side. Now you get a length of wire that runs from the back of the car all the way up towards the front as well. And also included is a simple four-pole flat jumper cable that goes up from the car and up to your four-pole on your RV. First thing we need to do is go ahead and open the back hatch and we need to remove the taillights. Let's open up the back hatch and we'll start on our driver's side here and there'll be four fasteners we have to remove. One, two, and this bumper, three and four. We'll need a large screwdriver for this bumper to remove it. Phillips head screwdriver. And then a 10 millimeter socket for the remaining fasteners. You could also use a screwdriver. Pull it up and back a little bit. It actually comes apart pretty easy. Now to get to our quick disconnect, we need to go ahead and pull the grommet out of the wall here. We'll go ahead and pull it out, and here's our disconnect. We'll push down the tab in the center and pull it apart. Okay, let's set this to the side for now and do the other taillight on the passenger side. Where our taillight's free, we need to modify them so we can install our new bulbs. Okay, we're going to use this location right here. If we flip the light over, we're looking at the driver's side. So our bulbs should come out somewhere in this direction right here. Should have plenty of clearance from the other light bulb and the lens itself. All right, so we're going to go ahead and drill out a quarter inch pilot hole first, then follow it up with a one inch hole saw. Okay, now let's go back at it for a one inch hole saw. Okay, let's do a quick test of our bulb and socket. And you can see it just barely makes it through. But that's okay. So next thing we need to do is go ahead and take these tabs and pry them out a little bit so it gets a grip on the plastic here. And we'll go ahead and cover up the edges with some silicone sealant. Okay. And these little tabs right here, we're just going to take a screwdriver and just pull them up just a little bit all the way around. Okay. Let's go ahead and put it into place. Make sure your tabs that we pulled up line up. And we'll have some resistance so it holds in place. So you may have to take some, pull some out just a little bit more. But you should hear a a nice satisfying click in there. Let's go ahead and put our sealant around it. Try to cover up, over, cover up all the holes. It might be a good idea to get some disposable gloves and just kind of work it in there. Okay, we'll let that sit for a moment and then we'll go ahead and work on our other side. Okay, now while our sealant is drying, we'll go ahead and work with our main wire harness. We'll go ahead and cut it free. We got a nice long loop here to work with. We also have two four pole ends. Now we only need one of these, so we're just gonna cut off one. We're gonna take this four pole end and drop it down between the bumper cover and the bodywork, all the way down to the ground. Now we'll run the vast majority of it through, but we need to keep a length out the back here to make sure it goes out to the other side. So we'll go ahead and work that over. What we're gonna do is loosen up our fasteners here and here, both sides underneath the taillights. We'll spring back our uh, bumper cover a little bit, just work a wire behind it. Just light pressure on it with a Phillips head screwdriver. We'll pull out the center. We'll do this screw here.
Okay, I'll pull up my door seal a little bit. Going across. Just kind of get it out of the way for now. I give us a little extra working room to put a wire in there. Let's use a screwdriver to kind of help pop it loose a little bit and work it in there. Make sure we have enough wire left over so we can take off the tail light for service. At some point in this future, you'll probably need a new bulb or two. And we'll just leave this alone for now and we'll go ahead and put our fasteners back in. Now on the driver side again, we're going to need some leave a loop in here to give her some extra working room. So I'm just going to create a small loop, probably put a zip tie at the bottom here, just to help keep it together. Now a kit doesn't come up with too many zip ties, so maybe a good idea to go ahead and get an extra supply of zip ties when you do the wiring. Now at this point, we'll go ahead and run our, our four pole wire up to the front of the vehicle. When we do that, we'll stay away from anything moving like suspension components or anything hot like the exhaust. And once we get up to the engine compartment, we want to go up and into the engine compartment near the hood and then back down to our base plate and our connection point up front. The reason why we wouldn't have easy access underneath the hood is to give us access to the wires so we can go ahead and install a supplementary braking system eventually. Now, now the loom clamp we're using is part number A0500. And we're just using a, an ordinary self-tapping screw to run through our clamp and into the frame of the vehicle. Okay. All right, now everybody's gonna run their wires a little bit different, but this is how we did it. Starting from here on the very top edge, we used a little bit of the loom material that came with the kit attach it to the wire, just around the sharp corners here. Then we use some loom clamps that don't come with the kit. Ran it above the suspension in these lines. Follow the parking brake cable all the way around. Then follow these lines going up towards the front of the vehicle. We kind of tucked it in behind a, a plastic guard here. Zip tied at both ends. And then just follow the lines on up. We went back into another plastic guard and worked our way up. And here we are by the front suspension. We also ran a piece of old airline tubing to help pull a wire up from the top to the bottom. We'll go ahead and use some electric tape attached to our four pole wire harness and we'll pull it up to the top. Now this pull wire can be any other piece of wire that can hold its shape as you run it down through here as well. Go ahead and tuck it up in there and get it started. We'll pull it out from the top. The way we routed our pull wire, we went behind the battery and just basically stayed alongside the, the side of the firewall here and just ran down between the brake lines to help keep it away from any steering components. Okay, now we'll go ahead and pull up our wire, make sure we take up all the slack. I think what we'll do is we'll route it underneath our cables here and around towards the front and down towards the base plate. Okay, there's a small opening that goes this direction. We'll go ahead and run our pull wire through there and out the bottom. Okay. okay. We'll go ahead and use some of our loom material to come with the kit. We'll go ahead and cover up the wires that we can see. Make some final adjustments on how we route the wire. And what I like to do is go ahead and zip tie it to in a couple places onto the grill. And when we're not using this, this is going to be simply tucked inside. Wait. Okay, now in this case, our base plate has a couple mounts for additional brackets for different type of connectors. Okay. However, our, the kit we're working with today doesn't have any brackets to mount it up. So we're just going to leave it a standard. And you can always upgrade this to a socket type connector or a bracket if you'd like. Okay, we'll 
snug them down. We'll cut off our excess. Okay, when it's not being used, it can sit like that. Protect it inside the grill. When we need to use it, you simply just pull it out. Okay, let's go ahead and take another moment to zip tie our wires. Okay, and let's take our excess bundle right here and let's fold it over itself and zip tie it. And I'll just tuck in there just fine, just like it is. And we have our access where we need it for a future braking system. All right, now our silicone should be dry on our lights. So let's go ahead and make our connections there and then reinstall the lights. All right, let's go ahead and take a moment and reinstall our door seal. And then we'll go ahead and start making our connections on the passenger side. We'll start with the easy side first. Each light's will only require three wires. In this case, ground, running light circuit, and a right turn signal. Now a yellow wire is for a left turn signal, won't even be needed, so we can go ahead and just cut this off short. Don't have to worry about it. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and prepare our wires. We'll go ahead and strip them back and add the butt connectors that come with the kit. Twist the wires and add our butt connector. Go ahead and prepare our wires. Okay, these are wires coming from our bulb and socket. Strip them back and twist the wires. It would be helpful to have a good extra set of hands to help hold the light while we do this. Work for ground wire first, which will be white. And now go to the black wire on the bulb and socket. The running light circuit is going to be brown, so that's going to be brown to brown. And our turn signal circuit will be red to our right turn signal. Now our right turn signal is also the same signal for a brake signal. If we have a turn signal, we know we have a completed circuit for our stop light as well. We'll go ahead and put some tape around to help protect the connections. And we can go ahead and put our light back into place. Let's go ahead and put our electrical connection back together. Route it to the inside and put our ground back in. Then we go ahead and put our light back into place. Okay, let's go ahead and reinstall all our fasteners. Okay, done for passenger side. Let's go make our connections over on the driver's side now. All right, let's get our wires ready. What we need to do is split all four wires apart. All right, now eliminate confusion. Once again, we're only gonna need three wires on this side. Our green wire for right turn is already being used. So we just tuck that out of the way, out of sight, out of mind. All right, we'll continue on getting our wires ready. We'll go ahead and add a buck connector to our wire. Starting with the ground wire. Okay, let's strip back our wires. Let's go ahead and twist these guys together. That way the ground from our RV will be carried through our wire and through our buck connector. And on this side, we'll go to our tail light on the driver's side. So our ground will go up and through and over to the other side. Same thing for brown wire. A running light circuit will go through the buck connector and out to the other side. We'll go ahead and work for yellow wire for our turn signal. We only need one half of it, so make sure you get the half that goes towards the four pole on the front. Okay. And we'll cut off our other one short. And we'll use another buck connector on there. Okay, now we'll go ahead and make our connections before. Black to ground, in this case the ground wires are white. Brown to brown. For a running light circuit. Turn signal circuit will be red to our yellow on our driver's side. Okay, let's go ahead and put our taillight back into place. All right, 
Now, we need to make one more connection up front underneath the hood. Supplementary braking systems do need a ground from our wire harness to the bodywork. So we'll go ahead and add that in here since we got some extra wire, it'll be easier to get to and work with. So we'll split our wire in half and we'll cut the wire in half and add a ring terminal and just attach it to the bodywork. Once again, using a self-tapping screw that doesn't come with the kit, we'll go ahead and attach that to the bodywork. All right, let's go ahead and apply power to it and try it out. First, a running light circuit. Okay, now a right turn signal. And our left turn. And remember, if we have a turn signal, it's gonna be the same thing as our brake signal, so we'll be good to go. Okay, now I'll finish it for the install of part number RM-155. The Roadmaster taillight wiring kit with bulbs on our 2012 Hyundai Accent.